Phil Ebener here with VideoSchoolOnline.com and another After Effects tutorial. This one is how to rotoscope using the roto brush. It's actually easier than you might think. I know a lot of people get scared about it and they try to mask things and use keyframes to animate that mask, but it's much easier using the powerful roto brush and I'm gonna show you how to do it so that you can cut out things, even moving objects, people, anything in your video clip to have them as a separate layer so that you can put things behind them, you can swap the background and do all kinds of amazing stuff. So let's head into After Effects and learn how to do it. So I'm here in After Effects and this is what we're going to learn how to rotoscope moving objects, people, things in your video so that you can place objects, text, other video behind that person or completely change the background like this where I've taken out the background from me and I've replaced it with a solid white background. So we're gonna dive right in and learn how to do this right now. So go ahead and if you have a clip, go ahead and open it up in After Effects. I just have this talking head video for an Adobe Illustrator class and I'm going to drag that into a new composition. So this is the entire video clip. So I actually just wanna select a portion of it and the shorter the portion, the better. So I'm actually gonna take the in and out points of this composition, zoom in with the plus and minus keys and get about a second of this video to work with. Now you can do longer, it just is gonna take longer and more time and I wanna make this quick. So then with that about second selected, I'm gonna go up to composition, trim comp to work area. So now my full timeline is this basically one half second of me awkwardly scratching my chest. All right, so typically before the roto brush tool, which is what we're going to be using in After Effects, what you would do is take your pen tool and you would mask out your person, go inch by inch around the ears, try to get as detailed as possible, and then you would have a mask, something like that, and for every single frame, you would have to go one frame at a time and move these points so that it moves with your object. That is silly when you can use the roto brush tool in After Effects. So I'm gonna press M and delete that mask. Delete that mask right there. Awesome, so the first thing I wanna do is actually duplicate this layer so I have a background to work with. So I'm gonna turn off the audio and then turn off this background layer for now. Then what I wanna do is go to the Roto Brush tool. So if you click and hold this tool right here, which is next to the eraser, you can see you have the Roto Brush and the Refine Edge tool. We'll be looking at both of them. Select the Roto Brush tool and nothing happens. You can't click or edit your clip until you go into the layer itself, which you can do by clicking layer up here, or you can, let's go back to rotoscoping, double click into your clip. So your video clip. So now we are actually editing the layer itself. And so if we go through here, we don't see any background layers or anything. We just are in the layer editor. Awesome. So now I want to make sure that I go to the very beginning of this sequence where you want to start rotoscoping. That's the thing you have to remember when you use the roto brush tool is to please start at the very beginning because it basically works. You have to start at the first frame, then you go to the next one, the next one, the next one. And as you go, you might have to make little edits here and there to improve it. But if you go back in time and you say, oh shoot, I messed something up on that first or second frame, and then you go back and edit it, that's going to affect the rest of the video clip. So make sure you start at the very beginning. And the first thing you really have to do is just click and drag over the object. And you'll see when I do that, this green line starts to appear. So what I'm gonna do is just click and drag all over my object within the lines and just, it doesn't really matter where you end, just undo. And you can see that After Effects automatically tries to outline myself. And this worked really easily for this clip because I stand out from the background. If you have a clip that where the background is more detailed, more busy, where the colors and the exposure of your foreground element that you are trying to remove or separate is uh, actually close to the background colors and exposures, this is gonna be harder and you might have to go in and make some additional edits. So what I'm gonna do now is make sure my mask looks good. And I can do that by toggling through these different views down here. So see this toggle alpha button? If I toggle through this, I can see a white sort of outline or silhouette of my selection. 
and then the silhouette or selection of my object object without the background. What I notice is that the buttons on my shirt did not get selected. So I want to make sure that I go and drag over the buttons right there and there. And so now they are all selected. To go back to this view, we can choose toggle off of boundary. There's different views you can see. You can see this view, which kind of gives an overlay over the background so you can see both the foreground and the background. One thing that you'll notice with people with hair, which is a lot of us, especially women or men that have longer hair, the hair is the hardest part to actually edit. So if I zoom in here, let's go up to 100% using the hand tool, which is the space bar. I can zoom in on this hair and see that it's really jaggedy and it's hard to actually, whoops, I don't want to click anymore. It's really hard to make those specific selections with the rotoscope brush. So we can use the, let's go back here, zoom out. We can use the ed, refine edge tool, but first what I want to do is show you some global adjustments you can make to your entire roto brush mat over here in the effects controls panel. So you hear roto, you see you have your roto brush mat. It automatically has a few settings such as the feathering set to five, contrast at 80, shift edge, reduce chatter. So what I typically do is increase the feathering just a little bit. Now let me actually go to this view so you can see kind of what's happening. So if I increase this to 50, for example, it's going to make the edge very sort of smooth and everything is going to be sort of blurred into the background. So if I do this, you have this nice sort of feathering. I don't want that because I want it to be more detailed. And so what I'm going to do is set this to something like 15, some sort of happy medium where if I look at it, it looks pretty natural. It's not completely smooth. You can play around with the contrast if you want. Uh, this may be able to help you make a selection. Same with shift edge. Say you want to actually squeeze the mat, you can choose negative 50, for example, and it will squeeze it in. Or if you want to include a little bit extra, press positive 50 or 100 or whatever you want. I'm going to leave that at zero. And then reduce chatter. This I like using just at like 10% or starting there. And that will help if you have a lot of movement and a lot of details. It will try to reduce any sort of sudden little jitters and edge sort of distortions uh, if with your roto brush mask. So play around with that one as well to really refine how this looks. So notice that I'm still on the first frame and that's good because we're making all of our edits to our mat and then we're even going to use our refine edge tool before we move on. So now I've selected the Refine Edge tool, and this is where you want to actually go in, and I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. And you see how some of the background is selected, this white area right here, and then maybe some of like the little wisps of hair are cut off. If I just brush over the edge like this, and I'm just gonna let go, notice what happens. Well, the view changes, but then you also notice that it has this little black and white line that's going around where I paint and it's making a more fine tune adjustment. You can really see it probably over here where the white is now going to be selected and that's where my hair is. And you can see now that the little wisps of hair up here are now selected, which is really cool. And this you'll really notice uh, with people with longer hair. So I wanted to get that bottom of my earlobe, which was getting cut off a little bit over here as well just to make sure it's perfect. So you can do this for hair, for any sort of fine-tuned detail in your object that you're trying to separate. Okay, now what do we do? Well, what I like to do is go frame by frame. So to me, you could go step forward on your timeline like this with your arrow, or on a Mac, you press Command, right arrow. On a PC, that should be Control, right arrow on your keyboard, and you literally go frame by frame. If something starts to change, and sometimes this happens if you have a more, uh, more movement in your video clip, if someone's like waving their hands or something, or if you have like a car driving by that you're rotoscoping out, you might have to go in and, again, using the roto brush tool, you might have to include or exclude some parts of your video. And to exclude, I didn't show you this before, but just hold the option key down on a Mac Alt on a PC, and now you have this little red circle. That's where you just, you can actually paint over anything that you want to delete. 
So see how I painted over that? And now it's just selecting my head and my hand. I got rid of my shirt. I use the sort of minus key for the roto brush tool there. And that's the alt key. So I'm going to undo that. So now we still have my shirt. Okay, so now I'm just zooming in and I'm actually going command, right arrow, command, right arrow, command, right arrow. The other thing you can do is zoom in here to your entire clip to the part where you are actually editing. And one thing you might want to do is see how this little, you have these little arrows, this edge span uh, range. This part right here doesn't go to the end of my composition, my timer. So if I go over here, it's past where that little those arrows go. And so if we want to automate this, we can extend this arrow all the way past or to the edge of our composition. Now I'm using a very long clip, so that's why we have all this time over here on this timeline. But if you're using a shorter clip, you might not have all this time. It might be more, I guess, zoomed in on your on your computer if you're using a shorter clip. And so what you can do instead of going command, right arrow, command, right arrow, command, right arrow, is you can press the space bar. And now it's going to automatically go through and try to rotoscope. And if you have an object that's easy to select, then it's probably going to do fine. If it's very detailed and lots of movement, you might need to do the manual way of command right arrow. But notice if this little sort of span right here with these arrows was only up to this point, which is halfway through my composition. So this composition here is this little bit right here. And I press the space bar. It only goes up to where that arrow ends. So I got to make sure that I extend this to the end or past where our composition goes. So sorry if that took a little long for me to explain that, but that's something that I used to get stuck on and beginners always ask me about why can't I automatically scrub through my entire video with the play bar. Awesome. So now I have this whole clip and it's gone through and it's basically made the selection for the entire length of the clip that I want. And you want to make sure that you go through every frame. You don't want to just do the first frame and then go back to your composition window, which is what we're going to do next, because the rest of your video clip might not be rotoscoped properly. Okay, so you see now that we have this whole thing selected, everything's edited, everything looks good. Go back to your composition. And now you can see that this top layer, which we edited using the rotoscope brush, is just the selection of myself right here. Now I see a little bit of imperfections in my ear right here. See how you see some white back there. There's a little bit of jitteriness to the edge of this selection. That's where I would go back, maybe increase the reduce chatter option in the effects controls. I would maybe play with the edge refine brush again, and you would have to go through frame at a fra frame by frame to do that. But for now, let's just show you how now we can actually add text behind myself. So if I turn on the background, which is just the original clip, we have two layers. If I take this top layer and we move it, let's move it over to the right, you can see that we have this selection of just myself. So if I add text, for example, let's just type in there, hello. And then we put this text layer behind the rotoscoping layer or the rotoscoped layer. This text is now behind me. I can play through this and when I move, parts of that text is covered where I actually move and then where I, I'm not, it's completely rotoscoped. Or we can add a different background. For example, if I go to layer, new, solid, we just want a white background. Let's just put that right behind the rotoscope. Now what I did was I added a little bit of a drop shadow to this top layer, which makes it look a little bit more natural to me. So if I add a drop shadow to this top rotoscoped layer, move the shadow back, make it really soft, drop the opacity to something like 20. It looks like I'm more in an actual set with a white psych behind me or a white backdrop. All right, so you can do all kinds of stuff. I could put myself on a beach. I could put myself in a snowy field now. And that was using just the rotoscope brush. Now, I know this seemed like it probably took a long time, but believe me, this is a lot easier than if you are using the mask tool and you're 
trying to keyframe and animate the keyframes of a mask that you create to separate the foreground element from the background. Awesome. Well, I know this was a long tutorial, but hopefully it was a good sort of brief overview of how to use the Roto Brush tool. There's lots of other options here in here that you could play around with. We didn't go over the refined edge mat options. So here under refine edge mat, you have things like smooth feather, contrast, you even have reduce chatter. And those are things you can play around with to improve your rotoscope. Sometimes depending on what you're doing, a lot of this stuff won't really matter. And sometimes your shots are fast enough or the object is moving fast enough that it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, and the audience won't really notice anything that's little minor imperfections, but they do give you all of these options to improve your, your rotos. So anyways, if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments below, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Well, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, please like and subscribe to the channel for more. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below in the comments. And if you're looking to take your skills to the next level, make sure you head over to videoschoolonline.com where we have premium courses, more free tutorials and articles, guides, and all kinds of stuff that will help you become a better creator. Thanks so much for watching and have a beautiful day.